And finally, I cover everyone's favorite firebird, Phoenix Iki. Waiting for actual changes in cosmology really pays off sometimes. Before getting to raw power, I will get a bit more into hacks unique to Iki. Yes, as his name implies, Iki cannot die. Or rather, when he dies, he comes back stronger. Something unique to him and the Phoenix Claw. Some think he simply gets knocked out, but no. He came back after getting obliterated by Galaxy and Explosion in the Sanctuary Arc. Something that's very underrated when it comes to Iki is his psychic power. Iki, in an effort to save his brother Shun, mentally attacked the Saint of Gemini from Death Queen Island to Greece. Iki was able to move without his senses due to his experience in manipulating the central nervous system. Gemini Saga has a technique unique to Pope's Sanctuary where he can manipulate the mind of his enemies. Iki's own technique was shown to be equal and stated to be on par with Saga's. When he used his mental attack on a judge, it reduced his power in half and is called legendary. So overall, Iki is one of the best psychic characters throughout the series. It was said to be able to destroy souls when used against a bronze saint as well, but we see him in the Hades arc, so make of that what you will. Now for attack potency and durability. Iki has many times been said to be the strongest of the Bronze Saints, all the way up to the Hades arc, so of course he scales to the other Bronze Saints feats. He is of course above the Silver Saints, who have the power to create earthquakes and split the entire sea. With his senses removed, he was able to overpower Shaka and explode, sending them to another dimension. With his full might, he was able to knock back Gemini Saga, also survive Galaxy and Explosion, a technique stated to be comparable to the destruction of stars and galaxies, easily punched through Lyamendus Scale, who is at least comparable to the other Mariners. In Goldcloth in the Poseidon arc, he should be comparable to Yoga, who held back a blast from Poseidon's trident, should be comparable to Dragon Shiryu, who survived the clash of two Athena exclamation, which has the power of the Big Bang multiplied to infinity, easily defeated multiple specters, one shot a judge of Hades who should at least be comparable to goat saints, was able to hurt Thanatos and Bronze Cloth, and also survived a technique from him, killed the god of dreams Hyponus with help, assisted in defeating Hades, as well as survive attacks from him. In next dimension, he again easily defeated multiple specters, fought a judge, fought Leo Kaiser, and was able to match his lightning plasma and could have countered if he wanted to. With the help of Deftoe, defeated another judge, was able to push back Gemini Kane, who is stated to be the strongest of the Goat Saints. Now on to Saint Seiya Episode G Assassin. I went into detail about the authentic claw and how it works in another video. I will link that at the very end, so I would just go over power. Iki fights Leo Aeolia, possessed by Zeus, rising in the ninth sense, and Dunamis. With the merger of the Leo and Phoenix cloth, Iki develops new techniques that are a combination of physical blast fire, paralyzation, and simultaneous attacks on the mind and soul. Now I will go to speed, then strength, then end it with overall attack potency scaling. Faster than the Silver Saints who can move up to Mach 5 via statements, though in terms of feats around Mach 20. With the Seven Saints, he can move at or massively beyond the speed of light. Attempted to run over a thousand degrees to escape Shaka. Among the Bronze Saints and Gold Cloth traveled the Super Dimension, which is stated to be beyond 10 billion lights past 100 billion miles of darkness, meaning he traveled past galaxies and the darkness between them. Scales to Thanatos, who can attack from another dimension, comparable to the Antipope, who can also attack from another dimension in a short period of time, whose lightning covered the infinite underworld. Faster than Shura, who surpassed the initial speed of the Big Bang, comparable to Seiya, who has been stated and shown to punch an infinite number of times, comparable to specters who can traverse time-transcendent infinite realms of the underworld. 
Overall speed, comparable to characters that have shown to attack and counter attacks in the infinite multiple times. Immeasurable to above baseline immeasurable speed, scaling to those that traverse the underworld, which transcends space-time. In terms of physical strength, it should be comparable to all the Baron and other gold saints who held up the sins of humanity, which is heavier than the universe, which is stated to be infinite with infinite stars. Now attack potency. With the seventh sense, he is comparable to the gold saints who has shown, survived, and have statements that put them up to multi-galactic to universal in scale. Much more powerful than the judges he defeated who can create dimensions filled with stars and planets. In God Cloth and Authentic Cloth, he would be comparable to the gods and god tier characters, such as Zeus Iolus, whose existence threatened Earth, whose cosmo is naturally protected by Poseidon, and perhaps even Gaia would destroy the underworld which acts as a layered multiverse. Stronger than a pre-full powered Poseidon whose cosmos could encompass the entire universe and was getting hundreds of times more powerful. Comparable to Hades whose power can manipulate three dimensions. The multi-dimensional layered world of the underworld, the hyper dimension that only gods can enter, and the infinite realm of Ellipsia, comparable to Athena and Eris. Athena seemingly created an infinite dimension that gods cannot escape. Eris created an extra dimension filled with galaxies that contain timelines, stat amplification with miracles, which can allow him to transcend gods. Stronger than Shaka, who could survive attacks from an infinitely powered titan who created a universe, survived direct attacks from a knight since Zeus Iolo who is his chosen vessel, whose existence was going to passively destroy the universe and the underworld, comparable to a weakened Seiya who fought and defeated a cyclops, who was given power from Uranus to erase the zodiac stars, destroyed and manipulated the sanctuary which takes power and authority beyond Athena, stronger than the Aeolia that fought Kronos. The power of Kronos was going to destroy the past, present, and future across all existence, even reaching Olympus. The Saint Seiya universe is an infinite universe of infinite size with multiple dimensions and is on a space-time axis. A universe or present branches off infinitely creating infinite futures and possibilities. A present universe is parallel to another infinite number of parallel universes, also expanding infinitely. Not sure if I explained that clear enough, but hey, see, told you I had something new. Hopefully I can phrase it better and possibly raise the level of power even more, maybe. But to put it simply, what has been confirmed is time is on an axis and the past and future time are different. There is an, a multi-dimensional universe and each universe is an infinite universe. Easy right? Now, what does that mean for the possible canon anime universe as a separate multiverse? I'll get into that another time. Anyway, speed. High hypersonic, massively FTL to infinite, immeasurable to above baseline immeasurable in god or authentic cloth, a attack potency, high multiversal to low complex multiversal via Kronos, destroying all of the infinite time and dimensions. Well, tell me what you think of this scale and upgrade guys, and please remember to like, sub, and hit the bell. Later.